to the Auburn Medical Group show. Hello. With Drs. Mark Vaughn and Dr. Wayne Vaughn. Dr. Wayne Vaughn. We hope to have a guest for you today, although not necessarily in the studio, but you'll be able to hear our guest. Excellent. So That's exciting. We're, we're kind of playing off of Dr. Gwen Vaughn's Dr. Green Knight blog, which yes. today was about uh, credentials. Yeah. And, and credentials. respecting people who have respecting credentials. the credentials. Yeah. Yeah. Respect the credentials. That's the title. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, credentials. It, Mostly in our case, we're going to be talking about medical credentials. Yep. But you actually expanded it out to even more than just medical credentials. Right. Uh, people who are yeah, who certified. Have appropriate or, training yeah. in, in their field and, and should, you know, scientists, engineers, um, yeah, yeah, everything, you know. Um, yeah, just to make sure that... Well, those are kind of the same area there, scientists and engineers. That is. Uh, we have see, people with um, teaching credentials and teaching people credentials, with uh, uh, law credentials and people with... Even like like construction, you know, people who go through yeah, the appropriate right. um, training to be able to do stuff on my house. I'm going to yeah. defer to them if I want something done on my house. I, it's a, a big thing, yeah. So, <laughs> so. different uh, credentialing bodies, of course, <clears throat> have different standards and, and some mean more than others. Yep. And some have higher standards than others. And we've even seen that you can have a state um, in the Department of Consumer Affairs, which actually handles our uh, yep. licensing That's it, right. as yep. um, medical providers. You can even have a credential through that that actually, to us, means absolutely nothing. And it pretends to be a health credential. Uh, or our license, you mean? What, Not what, ours. I, I, another one through the Department of Consumer Affairs. Oh, okay. The, the naturopathic or ND. Oh, yeah, that's right. Which I was going to say. Yes, I, there is some kind of a standard uh, that they're held to apparently uh, to right. because there is and this board for it. But yeah. from what we've seen, it. <laughs> Not it kind of overlaps with things that we do, but when we see the overlap, we don't necessarily consider it to be founded in science or yeah. uh, good data. Right. right. At least not the same quality of data. Yeah, they, they, they refer to articles out there, but... Yeah, yeah, it's not that there isn't something to refer <laughs> to and it, look at. They're, it's, they're different. Well, how, what rigor is there in, in what was done to come up with this result or... All right. Yes, it's statistically significant results, but is it actually significant in a patient's application? Like a it? clinical yeah, um, it, there are symptoms. Yeah. How, what's the likelihood that it's actually what's making the difference in the symptoms rather than just a placebo? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways. so there are different right. levels of, of meaning to credentials. Some, some Absolutely. are much more meaningful than others. Yeah. We, we're more familiar, of course, with medical credentials. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, there's the state licensing, and then there's uh, different medical boards for specialties. Yep, to be board, board certified. I'm sure you've yeah. heard of that um, terminology, medicine. but you can become board certified within a specialty that you have completed a residency in. And so the the ones that are the mainstream respected, yes, we know those specialties are under the American Board of Medical Specialties, the ABMS. Yes. And anybody can look up ABMS. I don't know if it's ABMS.org necessarily, but I don't know actually. American Board of Medical Specialties. And you can see what are the actual real Recognized. medical specialties. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because there are people who will say they're board certified and then they'll say what they're board certified the specialty. In, 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 it's something I've never heard of before. And, <laughs> and it is not an American Board of Medical Specialties. Yeah. Certification, right? Uh, I, I believe boxing medicine may be one of those. Yeah, <laughs> again, things I haven't heard of. I you do a, there was a board. I don't know if it's a weekend or a two week course in Las Vegas, and you oh, are a, sweet. Is that all it takes? You are a boxing doctor. After Maybe that. I could become like triple boarded or like quadruple, triple board, quadruple boarded. Actually, I do know people who are truly triple boarded. Yes, you know, in in, in true a ABMS. Actually, uh, our friend uh, Vanessa, she's triple boarded. Yeah, well, uh, Doctor uh, Internal Medicine, yes. pulmonary medicine, and critical care. I think. Are yeah. Three. Yeah. Yeah, she, which is pretty neat. Yeah, very, uh, very qualified. Yes. Um, and actually, she, she kind of comes in on something we're going to speak about a little bit later. Right. Yeah. 
and that's the doctor of osteopathy. The DOs. I'm, I'm yeah. sure you guys have heard this, uh, but um, maybe you've seen that those little letters after after a doctor's name are one of two. They're either MD or DO. Why did this come uh, into social uh yeah so lately everything. this is, has become a um a big thing especially amongst the do community because they they feel like they're getting a, a bad rap which they are uh, absolutely by by yeah. a few different circumstances that came up so the first one was the uh president to the or doctor to the president uh when he was in um uh, walter reed yeah yeah uh sean Connolly uh gave these daily pres daily briefings and he's the, kind of the you know doctor to president but he is a do um so there were some comments on twitter um kind of questioning his fit for caring for the president and and his recommendations uh, so that, that was one um and uh so it, it it kind of blew up and some people were saying things um <clears throat> he um is a do doctor and, and went through the DO, which we'll talk a little, uh, a DO program, which we can talk a little bit more about, and we will talk about. Um, so that's one thing. And then the other one was a uh, scrubs company, a company that um, makes scrubs for nurses and physicians to go into the hospital uh, called Figs. Um, yeah, I'm outing them here, I guess, by calling out their name, yeah. uh, because it was so disrespectful. But they had a commercial that had this uh, kind of ditzy lady come in, um, and, and I, I say ditzy lady because that's how she was acting, uh, with a very prominent DO badge, and she was actually holding a medical terminology book looking upside down, <laughs> of all things. So let's add that on it. Uh, very disrespectful to the whole profession of DOs, but also, I mean, just to women, and, and especially women, Both. Phys yeah. women physicians. That's why I really um, hope that we could get Vanessa on, because as a female physician, she could Oh, really, yeah, and she had some very... Um, she'd unload both guns on these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she and she did on, on her social media. She's very... Oh, that's where you got it from. Um, mm. And and appropriately so. It was just yeah. Um, yeah. wrong yeah, on so many levels. So, um, yeah, so those two things just... Uh, kind of sparked me to say hey let's let's talk about this a little more let's yeah. uh, talk about uh, different do different types of physicians do's versus mds um you know is there any merit to this uh which there's not uh spoiler alert um, <laughs> and then what is a do and and what does that mean and what can you expect from a do when you uh see one so we will be talking a little bit more later about do and md kind of side by side yep but where they're together, we'll talk about that now. The sure. medical specialties, which we touched on, mm -hmm. ABMS, and family medicine, emergency medicine. These are residencies uh, usually included with getting the certification. So you did a residency in family medicine, I did yep. emergency, uh, residency in emergency medicine. Following that, we took the exams. I, I had the, the oral and the written exams. Yep several months apart and you had only written had only written. have an oral one yeah and then we continually do this uh, maintenance of it right. yeah. with every so many years doing a big test and every year doing smaller amounts of continuing yeah, education making, certifying that we've done certain things under our board right but we can still practice medicine without that you can yeah you don't need to be yes. board certified to practice medicine no. Um, it just shows that you are keeping up with that yeah, specialty. Yeah, it's just one of those things yeah. that um, that some people like to see. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not something you can just jump from one to another, although there are people who are able right. to either do more than one specialty or change at some point in their career. That, that does happen on occasion. Right. But uh, sometimes a board won't let you in unless you did their residency. Yep. Yeah. And I believe that's how it is for family practice. Yeah, um, and, and for emergency medicine too. Yeah, you need to have completed an accredited family yeah. practice residency. So if, if a person did a certain specialty and they want to be board certified in another specialty, they, they'd have to go back to this experience of residency. And for those of you who haven't heard us talk about it before. <laughs> it's, it's difficult. It, it's not as bad now as it was when we did it. But this I, during my residency, I had a one week uh, on one of the rotations where I was at the hospital 136 hours during a single week. I also had a shift that lasted from the time I got there to the time I left with no sleeping in between in the hospital working entirely the entire time of 36 hours. Yeah. 
you don't see that as much anymore. But when we trained, that that was something you would see. I, I think it was already a little less. For they had you. already, yeah. Um, there were some put some regulations. restrictions on it. Yeah. So uh, essentially, you're it's called residency because you are a resident. A resident being somebody who lives somewhere. You live in the hospital, and oftentimes, house staff. Yeah, house staff. <laughs> you know, the, they are in the house. Yep. So the residents are always there uh, with the attending physician, somebody who's already done all their training and then is in the teaching role, there for them to go to for uh, consulting, for questions that they come up with, that, or, or somebody to supervise the care. And of course, it's the residents who teach the medical students also in these teaching hospitals. Mm -hmm. This would be uh, an onerous experience to take on once a person has already been in a career in a certain specialty to, to change. So yes. that is why I am not board certified in the specialty I actually practice. Right. Because I'm not going to family medicine residency I ain't going for back. three years. You can't make me. I, I would have to move to a, 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 a town with a teaching hospital and essentially live there and get paid the hourly equivalent of minimum wage or less. I, I remember usually, once doing the, less, the math. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in... In the late 90s, late 90s, I was making, depending on the year, thirty to thirty-two thousand dollars for the year, mm -hmm. but yet oftentimes working up to 136 hours a week. So you can do right. the math and figure out. No, that's that's not minimum that, wage. That's by below a minimum wage. Any yeah. <laughs> any stretch of the imagination. Right. No matter how you do the math. Mm -hmm. uh, although sometimes the it was only 40 hours a week. Hey. I can tell you the family Sometimes. family medicine residencies, um, a lot of it is outpatient because that's what we're training to do to do mostly outpatient medicine. It's what we do here, um, what we do here. So um, it was it was much less. Uh, we we had our uh, some of those restrictions in place. So um, it was law that you could not work more than eighty hours a week, and you could not work more than thirty hours straight. That that was the law. Oh my goodness, they're so nice to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I hit those. I hit those on some some. Yeah, I was gonna say that's still a lot. Yeah, yeah, I did a um, lot. So, so you know, you'd go in at uh, six o'clock in the morning, work all the way through, and then you'd be leaving at uh, noon the next day. Sounds like a caller. Okay, so <laughs> we're not taking public calls, but we are taking a call from Dr. Robert Jameson. Dr. Jameson, welcome to the show. Hey guys, thanks. I appreciate it. Hey, appreciate the, the opportunity us. to be on here. Well, this is yeah. working out. So. Yeah, we were, we were a little nervous about the technical side because <laughs> we, we haven't had a caller on, on a show for, oh, I don't know, probably over a year. So oh, wow, yeah. thank you. Uh, Dr. Jameson, I, I don't know if you've been watching the show up to this point, but we've been talking about uh, credentials and we've been talking about uh, allopathic physicians, MD, and talking about osteopathic physicians, DO, and you are a doctor of osteopathy, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. We picked the right. Hey, all right. <laughs> we called the right doctor. <laughs> uh, yep. so, so thank you for joining. And, and you have a specialty and you went to a residency and got boarded under the American Board of Medical Specialties, specifically the board of? Orthopedic surgery. Orthopedic surgery. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we were talking about there's a difference. You, have a, you actually have a different board than we do under the state of California, I believe. Yeah, it's the American, um, it, well, a lot of it's changing right now. The AMA and the, AO, uh, the AOA, the American Orth uh, Osteopathic Association, are really coming together, especially on the training side of things. Oh, yeah. Um, to have, you know, kind of a single board for residency training. So that way everybody pretty much does the same thing, same testing, same everything. Yeah. And then that's something interesting. I always notice this when we're talking to somebody from a DO background. Uh, they equate AMA and AOA because you actually are licensed through the AOA, right? It, exactly. We're, yeah. We're, we, and uh, we aren't yeah. uh, licensed through the AMA. It, it's actually something you completely can disregard and not be a member of because uh, we're licensed through uh, the state and then also through uh, the boards of, of specialty boards. Whereas you yeah, guys have that AOA thing. Across yeah, our specialty is. board is actually through the AOBOS, so the American Osteopathic Board of Orthopedic Surgeons. Okay. So different than the uh, allopathic orthopedic surgeons, it's you know just it's a different test. And okay. At the end of the day, all of the materials about the same. It's just yeah. uh, it's just different board, you know, different boards. But most all that is going away, uh, yeah. kind of as we speak. 
and over the last you know couple of years and then i think over the next few years it's all going to be pretty much obsolete the differences and that's true for my specialty where in my residency i had people with the do degree right there side by side with me getting the exact same uh training and in fact even certification by the same uh American Board of Medical Specialists, specifically American Board of Emergency Medicine, yeah, uh, it, it is the same there already. So you're right, it is yeah. happening. Yep. Right. So can you talk to us maybe just a little bit about uh, how your medical school was and um, maybe your experience at a DO school? Sure, yeah. So, you know, I had, I had looked at both allopathic and osteopathic medical schools, so MD and DO schools, and, uh, and actually got interviews and uh, acceptances to both of them. Um, for me, a lot of it was um, kind of the, the philosophy and training uh, was was uh, more of what I wanted in the osteopathic realm. The you know the goal with osteopathic medicine is really to take on more of a whole body approach, not necessarily holistic as far as you know not using any traditional medicine, but finding a balance of um, the whole body. So you know one of the ways it was explained to me early on was. You know, if somebody comes in with a headache, it's not so much just saying, well, here's some medicine for a headache. It's why are you having a headache? Let's see if we can figure out, you know, the reasons for the headache. And then are there ways kind of to a certain extent that your body can can help heal itself? So we did a lot of manual manipulation stuff, kind of a mixture of, uh, you know, physical therapy, some hands on manipulation um, to to correct, you know, muscular and, uh, you know, and potentially axial or skeletal disorders to help the body heal itself to a certain extent um you know as an osteopath i can prescribe medicines you know just like just you know just the same um and in fact there was a medical school now there's a lot more osteopathic medical schools even than when i trained but uh, up in michigan state a lot of my buddies went to a lot of the classes with the allopathic the osteopathic and allopathic students were together from for the pathology courses and and the immunology courses and, and the core classes and then um, the osteopathic students would go on to more of a, a manual um, training as well. So more of a hands-on, you know, the, the the manual manipulation side of it too. So that was kind of what it, what interested me about osteopathic medicine. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about it. I had a friend that was a year ahead of me that got into osteopathic to a DO school. And then as I looked into it, I found out that, you know, my pediatrician growing up and my, actually my our family, our family practice doc were both DOs down in Texas. And so I um, had a chance to talk to them, had a chance to talk with some other DOs and uh, just felt real, real comfortable in that, you know, with that training environment. So, um, and then I guess kind of, this probably doesn't answer that this question, but as I went on, I thought, well, maybe I, you know, it's going to limit me in, in what I can do in medicine. And, and what I found out is it's actually, I had, you know, in my residency, we had neurosurgeons, I obviously orthopedic surgeons, um, general surgeons, um, urologists, cardio, uh, you know, cardiologists. I mean, really any field of medicine you can get into um, as a, as a DO as well. So, yeah, you made an interesting point there where you talked about. Oh, I realized my pediatrician was. We we also have that experience where we do not know uh, who some of the people we regularly refer to, whether right. or not they're a medical <laughs> right. doctor or DO, unless you just happen to to see that kind of put in front of you because. When they're certified in the specialty, yeah, it, it doesn't matter uh, for getting up to that place because it's the specialty training after the school that really exactly. determines what it is you do day to day, and, and yeah. how well trained you are for that. Well, and I, and I think part of that too is is the you know a lot of the manual manip manipulation stuff, some of the hands on training that I had uh, in medical school as an orthopedic surgeon, especially you know I, I did a fellowship in hip and knee replacements. I don't do a whole lot of that now in practice. You know, obviously when people come in, they pretty much have arthritis. Either they do or they don't type thing. And there's not a lot of stuff that I can do. I think that it's really, you know, more on the on the primary care side of things. Even some of the uh, obstetric obstetricians that I know um, use some of that. But, um, you know, I don't now use a lot of manual manipulation just because uh, of, of kind of the, the practice that I have. Hmm. Now you say you talk about manipulation and um, some of those um, interactions that you do. Uh, somebody may look at that and say, "Oh, that's just a chiropractor. How are you? Guys, how is that training different than, uh, say, a chiropractor or what they go through?" 
Yeah, no, I think there are some similarities to that. I think it's a combination almost of that and a physical therapist to a certain extent as far as being able to feel the body, feel the muscles, feel the tissue, also feel some of the bony anatomy as well and be able to do some of the, um, I guess, kind of maneuvers that chiropractors do as well. Um, I think it's taking that whole combination of both of those and, again, that whole body approach, being able to use that as well as being able to use modern medicine as well, um, whether it's anti-inflammatories, whether it's, you know, some, uh, s- some of the medications that we that we are able to prescribe also on top of that and utilizing imaging even to, you know, obviously much further extent than uh, than chiropractic or, or physical therapy because we can, you know, actually order those tests, MRIs, CT scans, whatever we need to make sure we understand what the true pathology is or what's causing the problems. Yeah, and I, I, you mentioned there you, you um, still have the training in, you know, the Western allopathic medicine as well. Totally, so, so yeah. We, we see that and, and, you know, a lot of, I, I went to residency with a lot of uh, DO colleagues and um, yeah. they, they were right on par with us. You know, their training was very, sure. very good and they were definitely able to, you know, do all the things that that we could essentially do as as MDs uh, in, in yeah. our training. So, have you had? Yeah. A, oh, go ahead. I was going to ask if you, you've had experience of people really having a misunderstanding of the the level of training and qualification you have in your uh, practice as a physician. Sure. You know, I think that it was. I was worried about that, especially coming to the West Coast. You know, the Midwest. Um, there's a lot of, that's kind of where the, the original training centers, you know, medical schools, um, kind of originated there. And, and, and so there's DOs all over the place in the Midwest and the South. And, and, uh, and so, you know, I, I worried about coming to California and would, if I'd be able to, you know, if that'd be a question that I had or that all the time from whether it's from patients or other, other physicians, but I really haven't found that. Um, I, I think in the, High, more academic centers. So I did my fellowship down in Los Angeles and the surgeons that I worked with, one was from UCLA, one was US, or a couple of them were, you know, kind of affiliated with U, U, UCLA and USC and they had a private practice and I, I wanted to do the private practice. And I was the first DO they've ever taken on hmm. um, as a fellow, but they, they had no problems with it. It was just one of those things that they just didn't have. They hadn't really had, you know, DOs apply for that. So I think in the higher, I think that's one thing is that, um, traditionally a lot of the osteopathic medical schools um i feel have a really really um i guess emphasis not as much of an emphasis on research Um, most of them are not uh, affiliated with big universities there are a few a handful of them michigan state obviously is one of them Um, and so there's a lot more opportunity for research at some of the bigger the institutions affiliated with universities but a lot of them are private and so the, the focus isn't as much on um, academic research. And so I think as you go into a residency program and, and even as fel- in fellowship, the higher academic centers may not look as, at a DO as, um, you know, as carefully because it's just not as much of what we do when, when we're in our training. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not DOs. I mean, you know, I had DOs that were went to Mayo Clinic and did orthopedic residency and Cleveland Clinic and some of the you know big institutions as well. But it's not as much of a focus in uh, in our medical training, um, which for some people, that's not what they want. You know, a lot of people, they want to go in and be clinicians rather than uh, uh, researchers. And so it works out really well for them. But I think that's one thing that if I were to say, yeah, I didn't have a huge um, during my training, a big portion of my training was not research. That sounds great to me because then you can focus on actually treating patients. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like I said, it's good and bad for uh, for some people. So. Although I, I guess familiarity with research is, is helpful for totally. uh, for being able to read the literature and translate that Absolutely. to practice. But uh, do, yeah. we, do we have any uh, viewers who have questions specifically for Dr. Jameson? I didn't see any that, on there. Um, uh, Dr. Jameson, would you be comfortable answering some questions from our viewers? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I, I always say if there's no questions, it means either one of two things, either that <laughs> yeah. you know, nobody's listening or we did such a good job explaining it that nobody has, right. any, has, yeah. has any questions. Hopefully it's the latter. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, yeah, no uh, big questions. I guess somebody had a bad experience with an osteopath, and I, and, and I, would, I would just say um, – you know, you can't judge all osteopaths. I mean, there are bad MDs out there too, so you can't really sure. judge, judge the whole um, yeah. 
uh, profession, or I guess that a group of people by one. Uh, what can a DO perform that an MD cannot? Is oh, interesting. Question. Okay. Um, I don't see that there's anything on the surgical side. So in my in my right. you know in my specific practice as far as orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, any of the surgery side of things, I think the only thing is is probably doing the manual manipulation side of things in more of a primary care type setting. So being able to put your hands on somebody and, you know, helping their, you know, and, and whether it's you know, more of the kind of the chiropractic type stuff or the physical therapy type stuff, having that, those techniques um, are just, you know, and it's not that an allopath or an MD can't do that. It's just, they're not trained to do that. Right. Um, and so, but other than that, nothing, you know, I don't think that there's anything that, um, yeah, and then on the, the converse do. of that, I would say, is there anything that an allopathic physician can do that an osteopathic physician can't? And I, I can't think of anything. Yeah, you no. guys go into just about all. If you of can do all the same, same residencies, same residencies that we do, I don't yeah. think there are any any restrictions the license, there. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, no, I, I wanted to answer that that other question though, where somebody had a bad experience with a with oh, a yeah, deal, and well, and I and I have this conversation a lot with patients because. Patients have to feel comfortable with who their doc is, whether whether regardless of right. what the two initials are at the end of their uh, of right. their name. Yeah, absolutely. And there's some patients mm -hmm. that come in and and you know and I've told them I said listen, it, especially with you know with surgery, regardless of what it is, because you have to feel comfortable with who your physician is, and because at the end of the day they they want we, we all want them to have good outcomes, whether it's primary care, whether it's obstetrics, gyne surgery any kind of surgery we want them to do well all of us i think go into medicine and, and are practicing medicine so we can help people what patients need to make sure of is that they feel comfortable enough with the surgeon or the doc that they work with that yeah. if heaven forbid they have a complication that they feel like hey i did my research i felt very comfortable with with dr jameson or dr vaughn or whoever it is that they are truly doing the best that they can to help me and it just is unfortunate that I had this this outcome, and and and, it, and I think it's a real thing, and it's a big deal. And again, I, I don't think it matters what initials people have behind their name with that. But if somebody doesn't feel comfortable, I think that there's enough docs out there where I tell them, I say, hey, maybe get another opinion and see yeah. if there's a better fit for you yeah. um, out there as well. So I I'm the first one to profess I'm not a perfect surgeon, I'm not a perfect person. And uh, but I want to make sure that we have a good enough relationship and that we feel comfortable with each other that when I do that surgery, that I really feel that I can help them. So going back to the DOMD and, and if somebody says, hey, you know, it's I had bad experiences with DOs, then I think that's OK. You know, yeah. if what makes you comfortable is seeing MDs, there's no harm done with that. You it is your body. It is your, you know, kind of life. And you have to make sure that, that you don't have stress. It's already stressful enough coming to a doctor's office you want to make sure you feel comfortable so yeah i appreciate that I, I, yeah i like that advice for a second opinion because then yeah then they find out oh man i really do like this guy yeah <laughs> <they> come back <laughs> he, that's right true, yeah and, and I, I know you're 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 being humble there you're not a perfect surgeon but you are a truly great surgeon we have yes. heard yeah yeah patients you're no I, and I listen some, i appreciate it yeah yeah, yeah for, me, very good for me it's about taking care of people and absolutely you know, people better you know getting people walking yeah so, so when we have patients that we refer to dr jameson they can watch this video and see sure yeah absolutely uh definitely get your perspective why we use dr on, jameson on, yeah. on, um, no it's, how, you guys are so kind of, no, i appreciate that Thank you so much for being on the program. Would you like to share uh, your website uh, on the show so that people can find it? Um, yeah, sure. So we are the Orthopedic Specialty Center of Northern California. So our website is just www.tosknorcal.com. So that's T-O-S-C, Norcal, N-O-R-C-A-L.com. So www.tosknorcal.com, the Orthopedic Specialty Center. M-O-S-C-Norcal.com. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if people have any questions, you know, I am, you know, you guys can send those through Dr. Va either the Dr. Vons and, and uh, yep. or to me, and we'll we're more on. than happy to answer questions that people have. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for joining us, Dr. Jameson. Appreciate no, it's my pleasure. Thank you guys for doing okay. this. What a, what a great thing that you guys are doing. What well, a great, thank you. great uh, service to the community. So it's awesome. That's very kind. Yeah. All right. No, we'll talk appreciate to you later. You guys. All right. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. That so was that was that was a conversation with Dr. Jameson, who we love. Who, uh, uh, Dr. Jameson, D.O. Yes, um, orthopedic surgeon, okay. and uh, he he is a 
a joint replacement specialist. He's actually been, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Trained in just that. Um, yeah, fellowship. Fellowship, that's what yeah. I'm looking for. That's what he's talking about, that USC, um, UCLA fellowship. Yeah, yeah. So, and he, he yeah. is great. We have had great outcomes with our patients who have gone down and, yeah. and had their yeah, uh, yeah. hips and knees replaced for him. So uh, actually one question did come in, but I think Another we question? can order it or answer it. Uh, why do most DOs go into primary care? Um, I don't know if that's true. I don't, don't know if that's true either. I, I think it may just be that uh, primary care is a more abundant field. Um, do we currently have 50-50 so split between primary care and special care for physicians in general? I don't think so. I think um, more, it's actually more specialty. More specialty? Definitely more specialist. I, I actually yeah. think there is a bit of a, a, a leaning toward primary care in osteopathy. And I, I hate to say this on, on Dr. James's behalf, but it, it's kind of an observation I've made that in this more, and he he's careful about how to use the word holistic because he doesn't want to be misconstrued, yes, but yeah. more whole person uh, approach, which fits more with primary care. It does, yeah. I mean, you come in, we can yeah. take care of anything. We consider well, ourselves least, to be whole person. and figure well, out where to send you yeah. uh, and what to do with any, any problem that you come in. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that does kind of fit with that whole DO approach. I tell you that that my medical school, I went to Loma Linda University, kind of took a, a whole person approach yeah. to uh, that even included more of a spiritual um, yeah. incorporation into that, too. It the Adventist uh, school. Yeah. An Adventist school. So I, I can appreciate that fully, and, and I appreciate the... The DO yeah. perspective there. And my understanding is UC Davis here, the closest medical school to us, mm -hmm. ha has a kind of a, a push to get people toward primary care also, yeah, I even think though they're they a great school are. for specialties. Right, yeah, I think I think just about all medical schools are um, because, uh, unfortunately, at the really? way You think UCSF is? <laughs> Maybe not. You know, the, the tough thing is a lot of, a lot of, not a lot, but um, there are schools out there that are very expensive. Medical school is expensive. I mean, just... Yeah. Uh, that's just how it is. And, and uh, primary care specialties don't pay as well as the special or as the specialties. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, you, if you come out of medical school with a three hundred thousand uh, dollar debt, uh, which some medical schools do cost that much. Yeah, that, that's I'm not over exaggerating. No, there, um, there are. Uh, I'm, what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose primary care that you know makes maybe two hundred thousand dollars a year, or are you going to choose right. you know some specialty where you can the, make five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars a year yeah. and pay that off much more quickly? Um, just a little perspective there. But yeah, there there has been a pu push lately to try to push more uh, graduating physicians into the primary care fields because uh, at the rate we're going, there is and there will be a worsening shortage in the future yeah. uh, for primary care doctors. Yeah, anybody out there who's watching who's going into medicine, please consider primary yes. care. Those yes. of us who are going to be old in a few years really will be needing not you. Not me. Uh, and, and that's actually uh, uh, one of the reasons why we're, we're utilizing the physician extenders or APCs, advanced practice yes. clinicians, yes. a lot more uh, in a primary care role. I mean, we've yeah. got our nurse practitioner, our PAs who are wonderful and allow us to essentially double. Uh, and, and the uh, research the shows it's appropriate. We're seeing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and, and so it's a good thing. That, that's yeah. actually another thing I mentioned. I got another article in there on those uh, physician extenders. Oh, yeah, you NPCs. mentioned them. So, um, yeah, go check out the, uh, the um, article over at drgreennight.com. Absolutely. Uh, Any other final comments from our Wonderful viewers. Yeah, let's take a look. Uh, see, thanks for joining us. We appreciate those comments. Yeah. Uh, try to answer all the ones we have. Um, some people saying they have great uh, great GPs. And yeah. Um, yeah, I think we answered all the other ones. So Okay. We're good. Good. So, yeah, right. find a doctor that you're comfortable with. I think that's the yeah. takeaway here. Uh, Absolutely. Those, those two letters at the last, uh, at the end, uh, just mean that they're a doctor. Um, <laughs> And, and they can do anything, uh, you know, if they've gone through an accredited residency, they can do yep. Esse yep. essentially anything that the other one can do. And then there's me who didn't do a residency <laughs> family medicine. I do it anyway. But and you do it anyway. I've been doing it a long time now. You've so. been doing it long enough that you are, you are <laughs> grandfathered in. And emergency medicine is kind of a, a good... You do, you do unfortunately do a lot of primary care through the, through the ER. A good so. background for yeah. making that transition. Yeah. So that kind of worked out. So anybody you want to thank? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so over at drgreennot.com, make sure you check it out. I do want to thank those uh, patrons who make it happen, Boo Boo Kitty and Teresa Roth. Thank you. Appreciate yes, it. Patreon.com. You can also go to patreon.com slash Dr. Vaughn to find people like Boo Boo Kitty and Lizzie Antwine who like to have their names <laughs> on every, every, not every video, but almost every video. <laughs> Thank yep. you so much. We do appreciate you. Yep. And thanks again to Dr. Jameson. Dr. Uh, Jameson. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Jameson at uh, Tosk. NorCal. NorCal.com. Yes. If you need a new hip or knee, yeah. they, travel, they, to, travel to Roseville. They to have several to choose from. <laughs>
right off the shelf. Like, they got a showroom. Show try room. this one, huh? Showroom. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Anyways, no, they, they Okay, he'll never be our guest. I know, he's, he's, he's never going to. He's like, oh, man, they're oh, gee. butchering my specialty. Yep. What are they doing? We have to find another person to call. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jameson. Yeah, yeah we do appreciate right. it. Until next time. Yeah, I'm Dr. Gwayne Vaughn. Dr. Mark Vaughn telling you to stay in good health.